Today, we will be replacing the emergency brakes or the parking brake or the e-brake pads because my car because my car is 15 years old and the pads are actually starting to not bite into the rotors as much as I would like because whenever I park on a incline and I put on the e-brake and if I happen to sit in the car after I put on the e-brake it starts to slide a little bit then it catches the rear disc brakes so I was thinking to myself, these pads are probably the original pads that came with the car. So let's go in and figure out how to replace these e-brake pads. First step is to obviously jack up the car and make sure that the car is nice and safe and sturdy. Second of all, you need to, of course, obviously take off the rear wheels. And the next step is to loosen the parking brake adjustment cable here you have to access this inside the car and you have to remove this rear storage compartment here first step is to take off there is a small little cover here you need to just just take this off with your hand or a little pry bar from there on you there are two t25 screws and then you'll be able to take this rear compartment storage off from there right here is the adjustment for the e-brake so and we need to completely loosen this nut right here facing this way we need to take a 10 millimeter wrench and turn it clockwise and I turned it around 70 times to completely loosen the cable here because we don't want any tension on this cable and therefore any tension in the rear of the car on the e-brake when we're trying to replace the pads and the next step is to actually remove these old rear pads here for the e-brake. You see this is the first pad here and this is the second pad. What you need to do is go in from the inside and punch out two guide pins. I've already punched out the first pin here. I need to go and punch this out with a drift here and making sure that I this spring here doesn't pop off. What you need to do is as soon as you're, you punch this pin about halfway out here, you push on this part here to relieve tension and then you'll be able to take this guide pin off while making sure that this spring here doesn't uh, suddenly release this tension and then fly off. So let's take a look at these parts here. These are the two guide pins that I removed. They are reusable along with the spring that holds the tension on these guide pins. And this came from the driver's side. So let's see if I can zoom in here. So after zooming in, you can obviously see there is some uh, damage here. I'm not sure what happened. Could be just years of this parking brake being used, whatnot. I'm not sure. And it's the same thing over here. So yeah, I'm not sure what happened. And this is probably the reason why the car lurched a little bit when I put the uh, e-brake on and the car is on a slight hill it kind of lurches a little bit moves a little bit and then it catches and here are the new pads and you can see there is it's very uniform here and let's check the thickness here yeah yeah there is a lot of meat that is missing and yeah these I would say these are toast so uh, with the old and with the new, right? So after I clean up this entire area with brake cleaner, the service manual says to on this side here, this side, and then up top here. And I guess it's used to install the pads as well as to help deal with any sort of squeal that might happen when we reinstall the guide pins and the spring. And just my luck, of course, what happens is this, uh, uh, e-brake has been in there so long the piston has actually gone in really deep and I cannot fit both pads inside right now so and the service manual did warn me about that if these pads have been broken in quite a bit and which it has what you need to do is actually take off these two let's see here take off these two M10 bolts here in order to take this entire caliper off once you have the entire caliper off you could then use this special tool here 
attach it to the piston here and then turn it, I believe, clockwise to be able to unlock the pins here that is preventing this entire piston from going back. And then you'll be able to get enough space to be able to install the two pads here. So here's the caliper off and as expected, yes, with this tool here, I just latch on here and then I turn it clockwise to push the piston back in. I'm pushing it back in just enough so I can fit in the new pads here. So once everything is off, you can just go ahead and install the pads as well as the guide pins and the spring all here. And then once this is assembled, just go back and put the e-brake caliper back onto the disc and then tighten these two bolts here that you took off to 55 newton meters here on each side. Now, the service manual did say that you should replace these bolts. I'm not going to because, well, they look really good and it's, yeah, it's, I, I doubt that these bolts will loosen once I tighten these bolts back up 55 newton meters. So here is the e-brake caliper fully reinstalled along with the new pads, the guide pins, and the spring. I managed to put back on the e-brake cable, and then I was able to torque the two back bolts here, 55 newton meters, and there should be some play. So once you've installed both sets of pads on the left and right-hand side of the car, you then go back and proceed to tighten that nut back counterclockwise this time, and this will now become sort of a guessing game. I loosen this nut around 70 rotations. I'm going to tighten back this nut, say 50 rotations. So once I have my initial adjustment, I'm going to slightly pull one click on this parking brake cable. Then I'm gonna see and rotate this brake rotor and see if there's a slight drag. If there is not a drag, I need to go back and tighten the cable a little bit more. If there's too much resistance, I need to back off and loosen the cable. And I'm gonna go back and forth and find that perfect sweet spot where one click on the e-brake equals a slight drag here on the rotor. Now, once I found that sweet spot, I could then pull this brake up three times and then go back, pull this up one click, and then figure out if there's still a drag, if there, it is too tired or too loose. Again, do it again loosen or tighten, and then go back and make sure that one click will equal a slight drag on the rotor here. So overall, that was a pretty quick job and a pretty quick video. And I just really wanted to show you all of what it takes to replace your e-brake pads because I don't think there are a lot of videos that actually show you what to do, quite frankly. Now, if you found this video helpful, I will so appreciate all your support by smashing that like button and subscribing to this channel. I will really appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video.